on October 16, 2010, my host today says, and I quote him, as I am ushered into the governor's office in Adoikiti, make no mistake about it, I will ensure that the good people of Ikiti State own this government. I will do this by redesigning my agenda through the village square and town hall meetings I promised, democratizing governance, modernizing agriculture, improving on infrastructure, promoting free and qualitative education towards the development of functional human capital, providing free health and social security to the disadvantaged sectors of our state, ensuring industrial development, tourism, and sustainable development, and promoting gender equality and women's empowerment." End of quote. How far has Dr. Kyle Defiami gone in delivering on these promises he made three years ago? Ekiti State is 17 years old. He is three years on the seat as governor today. In another year, he will be facing re-election. I'm here in Ekiti State today to find out how far he has gone delivering on these promises and more. Well, hello and welcome. This is 60 Minutes with me, Angela Ajitmobi, and it's coming to you today from the state they call the Fountain of Knowledge, a state in the southwest region of Nigeria. My mission today is to see how far the governor and chief executive of this state has delivered on those promises he made at his inauguration on the 16th of October 2010. I didn't want an office interview alone. I wanted to take the governor out to see those projects physically. Seeing, they say, is believing. And so the first stop was the new government house in Adoikiti. Last year, about this time, October 2012, I was in Ekiti State. The governor took us to the site of the new government house. At that time, the contractor was just beginning to drill for water. There wasn't anything on the, on the site. The road leading to the new government house was a dusty red road. So let's see what's happened in the last 12 months. The choice of this this spot seems to me very strategic because as I'm driving around the whole of Ikiti, yeah. I see this building so imposing on top. Okay. And then I saw that picture in your office in exactly. 1978, yeah. you know. And so I thought this is probably from your knowing the terrain so well. How did you choose this spot? Well, uh, as you may recall, I, I grew up pretty much in this. Yeah town. I was a student down the road in Cry School and this was one spot that you could see from every part of the state. Yes. We also have a hill almost uh, adjacent to this yes. which we call Agidimo Hill. Okay. That's the hill on which the Ekiti Bishop right. of the Anglican Diocese yes. sits atop. That's, okay. that's where he lives. Right. Uh, and whenever we're on top of that hill, yes. we can always see this. Ironically, it was the same Anglican yes. 
communion yes. that first took possession of this land. And their vision then was to build a church here. Right. But that fell through and there were all sorts of um, agitation over the land mm -hmm. before uh, we came. So you could say that it's always been in my subconscious yes. that if I ever had an opportunity to do something with this land, yes. it would be the city of government in Ekiti. It's fantastic. I mean, the views all around. Yeah. Last year we were here. This is exactly a year to the day yes. that we came here. On that day, they were just looking for water. Absolutely. There was nothing on this site. Correct. And this is um, a year on. How soon will you be moving in here? Well, um, they're now on the final floor uh, and ready to fix the roof. But you know, this is what in building parlance they call the carcass. Right. The final stage is the furniture and fittings. Right. And that could take, uh, oh, yeah, and, so. well, I don't think it's going to take a year. It'll probably take uh, a few months because, I mean, they're, they're, they're plastering as they're, uh, going along so if we get in there you'll see that they've virtually completed the substantial work mm. that is required all that is left is moving the necessary fittings yeah. uh, the electricals water uh, plumbing system, system, plumbing yeah. system, even that they've been doing the conduits and everything it's, it's already uh, internally uh, constructed and they finished the service quarters the road is ready yes. um, there wasn't a road last year there was no road then but but now now we have a road uh, i was just thinking also the helipad and that's the whole well that's where we, we, we had just come from where right. there's no old government house right <laughs> what will you do with this government house now when well it's actually the uh, government house guest house where I live now is the government house guest house it's right. because we have no government house so to speak there's yes. a presidential guest house there is the uh, other government guest house chalet right. and then there are a whole lot of VIP buildings there uh, as well as service quarters right. that will still serve the purpose of accommodating a whole lot of people right. without having to put our guests in hotels. hotels yeah. cheaper so well. it's cheaper to run. And, and this helipad, I'm just wondering with all these hills around here. Yeah. You know, is it safe? Oh, I'm sure it's absolutely okay. safe. Um, I, I am not uh, an engineer, but to put up a building like this, a lot of structural work must have been factored in and the architect must have calculated precisely what is required in order to be sure that it is absolutely safe, as yes. safe as safe can be, yes. uh, to put it in, in, in this place. And the amount of concrete works that I see is, <laughs> is huge. So I don't see a threat to safety in that sense. I'm, I'm sure it's pretty safe uh, and they've, they've done uh, uh, a lot of work further guaranteeing the stability of the structure. And obviously because it's so high on the hill, the security concerns are taking care oh, of Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, 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 they're doing that. You, know, you recall our discussion last year when you came, it was that we wanted um, a timeless building. Yes. Uh, if you like, our own Downing Street in Ekiti yes, or, 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 or our own White House yes. that would serve generations yes. uh, and it would be there, it's built with everything factored in. Yes. You can hold meetings of uh, a thousand people here, there's yeah. a banquet hall, there are right. several so meeting no rooms. Need for, uh, your successor to want to build anything? There, there really should be no need for anyone to want to build anything in the form of a government house. He, or she may well decide to build some additional structures, Structure, yes. but I don't see the need for 
a government house after this? Absolutely none. There, there's no, no, no basis. There'll be no justification for it. Do you have any idea about how um, Ekiti people feel about this project? Have you got any feedback? Well, mixed, mixed feelings. If you talk to opportunistic politicians, <laughs> they will tell you why is the government spending two billion on a legacy project, yes. as we call it. Yes. And I think there is certainly a point to be made uh, about opportunity cost uh, in that sense. But the question that I ask those who say that is that symbols are important. Symbols do not completely make a government. Yes. It doesn't make a people. And for goodness sake, we're not in the world of Neanderthals anymore. We are, we are now in a new world. But much more importantly, is there a trade-off? And I would say, no, we still meet our obligations in spite of doing this. Um, in fairness to previous governments, I must say we were not the first to think of a government house right. like this. Yes. Even my most immediate predecessor, Governor Shegoni, thought of it, even had a model uh, of built up, built up. Yes. and if you go into my office you see the model there of, of his own uh, vision of what a government house would look like. Yes. Interestingly, I think he also identified this Hill. place as the uh, uh, site for the government house. So I, I it's don't, a different design. Yeah, it's a totally different design. This yes. was not his design. So I, I really do not think we should place too much store in uh, what um, comes from that minority segment of our population. What is important to the generality yes. is that we do not shirk our obligations. Mm -hmm. If we must do this, if we must do the civic center, if we must do the pavilion, if we must do the markets mm -hmm. and every other legacy project that we've put out there and restore Ecogosi back to shape, it must not be in the way of other things. It also makes economic sense. I have just told you the trade-off. Yes. By putting a lot more of our buildings that have been built by previous administrations yes. to better use, we will spend less on hotel accommodation uh, uh, out there. Yes. We'll bring in more people, more staff into these premises. Yes who would not have to risk coming from town because this comes with service quarters. And ultimately, the value of this place in a hundred years' time is something that would become a kind of security for the state. Unquantifiable. Un unquantifiable security. And I, I'll give you just one tiny example of that. Yes. When Governor Debayo took a bond, about a decade ago and did a number of legacy projects like this. He built a place in Abuja called the Ekiti House. Right. It's an imposing structure. It's in the central business district next to the federal secretariat. And uh, you have um, the popular Nanit suit uh, yeah. leasing a part of it. Right. This was built at a cost of 700 million naira at the That's time. Right. You know what it's worth now? We just did its valuation. 4.7 billion naira a decade down the line yeah. so for us this is something that deserves to be done yeah uh, it is something that remains permanently the property of Ekiti State yes. Kadifaim is not going to lift this building and take it to his village yeah. when he yeah. ceases being governor of Ekiti State yes. and the next person would not have to come and have to scrimp and scrape about where to put guests who normally yeah. in the run of duties would come to see the governor uh, of the state and, and it really is not befitting yeah. what I go through sometimes yeah. trying to accommodate, accommodate yeah. people VIPs, yeah. uh, or even entertaining VIPs we have in the guest house toilets uh, where you came this morning uh, we have just one sitting room <laughs> which proves very difficult at times for yeah. me to accommodate my own guests for my wife to accommodate uh, and sometimes i have 
two, three sets of people waiting. People waiting. Uh, and I don't think it defeats um, uh, a state like ours. We, we too, we're, we're not second-rate <laughs> citizens. We're not a second-rate state. Yeah. Uh, we want people to know that this is indeed mm. a destination of choice. And what they can get in Lagos, they can ought to be able get, to yeah. get uh, when they come to what used to be known as backwater Ekiti. <laughs> this is Adjo Ekiti. So from these windows, if you come in for an event, you can see as further afield as the university, you can see the whole... Um, Adjo Ekiti is, is surrounded by hills. Yes, the city is like in a valley. You wouldn't feel that if you're driving in. We're driving through it, but you can see it almost forms like a rampart, Rounded. a security rampart, yeah. so that if you want to invade it from outside, you, you have a lot of work to do. Yeah. This is the view the governor of Ekiti will be working up to. <laughs> <laughs> there is an office here, okay. um, but I won't literally abandon the the public normal office, office, normal office, but there's yeah. a lot of work that can be done. You can yeah. have exco meetings here. Yes, as well. exco meetings. Things can be done here. So this this is the final floor. What you have from here is just the roof. Right. Will, will that be open there, like a patio? Yes. This this is going to be. In fact, I I believe it's. Okay, it's the one on the second floor that gets. Out. Uh, out. It okay. uh, juts out. Okay. But this is like a patio. The windows there, from what I gather, would be more of um, open plan glass. Right. Because no one can see in any way. At, exactly. At this level. Yeah. And this is obviously living quarters. This is the this is the first family living quarters. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say were the greatest challenges with? building this? Well, I, I think they were, they were very thorough. I, I saw the way they started from scratch, breaking the, the rocks first. Right. Don't forget, we're standing on a hill and there was a rock here. So they had to flatten the rock and still manage to create some kind of buffer zone yeah. so we could drive through. Because what they did, where we have the road now, yes. they actually had to bulldoze. They had to to blast, <laughs> blast the, the road, road. Blast the road out <laughs> of the hill. Absolutely. <laughs> the road was blasted out of the hill. There was no road, remember? It wasn't just as if we, we happened on a road. This is a hill. Last year when we came and we drove on that dirt road. They've just blasted the rocks. So this was actually borrowed. Borrowed wow. into. <laughs> I mean, out of the hill. No, no, in fact, the, 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 the sizable amount of the early period yeah. was spent on that. The building was so, it was minimal work, getting to the stage. Comparatively, because you must have spent like six months, yeah, six, 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 six months, months. <laughs> eight months too. Before the store I started, the, the were, were you scared in government house when they were blasting? Oh, well, sometimes when they blast, we hear the... But they, they, they do send warnings uh, and alerts to us that this morning we're going to blast, so, <laughs> to blast, so please <laughs> don't, uh, <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> so they, they, they were doing that regularly, informing residents around here that um, they were going to do some blasting and it might, um, noise level might really uh, affect our hair <laughs> drums <laughs> and all that. So, so it was literally carved out of a hill. I think the amount of concrete that you have here could literally build uh, <laughs> a, a whole village. <laughs> well, the new government house cannot function without members of staff. And so the governor showed me the houses of residents, about seven of them, that will house the critical staff that surround the governor. Quarters for uh support staff adc yes. uh chief detail chief security officer uh the special assistant domestic affairs and yes.
people who have to be around uh, uh, government house 24-7 yes. and who work till very late, they also deserve to be uh, quite um, uh, well accommodated, close yeah. to the government. Uh, At least house. they can bring their families. So their families can be here. I yeah. mean, if you have to work 24/7 with the yeah. governor, yeah. <laughs> at least you should be able yeah. to also live as close mm -hmm. as possible. It's okay. interesting how you use the landscape here. I think yeah. it's really beautiful. Reminds me of Spain. Yes, it, it looks like um, those. Hills uh, yeah. in Marbella yeah. or Madrid, yeah. <laughs> uh, where they have a lot of hilly mm. stones uh, mm. as well. It, it's it's a good utilization of the space. Mm. You couldn't even imagine that you could put in uh, six, seven houses, uh, houses uh, of a sizable uh, so it's quality. One per it's one per person. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, How many a, bedrooms? I think it's a two bed. Yeah. We'll take a break now. Join me again after the break. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it's 60 Minutes with me, Angela Ajitumobi, coming to you from Ikiti State in the southwest region of Nigeria. And we're looking at how far Governor Faemi has done in delivering on those promises he made in 2010 and whether or not he's justified in seeking a second term in 2014. And then he was off to the new Civic Centre. Recall that last year in the interview I had with the governor of the state, he had said that the prison that was located in the center of Adoikiti would be de demolished. The prisoners will be moved to a new prison site just on the outskirts of the town. And that plot of land would be utilized for the benefit of all Ikiti people. So there is a civic center uh, being built there. And that's where we're heading to now. Echo show. Echo show. Hey, how are you? Progress? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, to Jari. I know this is a surprise to you. <laughs> <laughs> How soon is this place going to be ready? Now we are planning to complete the main structure by December. Okay. Yeah. By December. Because they're already on the final floor now. Yeah, this is the final floor. And this one has two floors remaining. Okay. The north floor it has two okay. remaining. What, what exactly is the civic center? Well, obviously, when you go to any modern city uh, in any state, you yes. expect to find a place which is a melting pot right. for the people and their guests in terms of a place where you can have a convention center, right. activities where you can have um, theater, film house. What we have here is a museum. We have a gallery. We have a uh, film a cinema uh, complex. We have an amphitheater. Uh, we have an amphitheater here as well and we have a library on the other side which has now started. So it's a multi-purpose civic center where 
and we also have shops. Uh, we have shops for people who want to buy memorabilia and uh, uh, all sorts of historical uh, artifacts from from Ekiti. So the idea is that it's going to be a destination place for people, young, old, working population, to to come to to converge in and um, do their thing and it will be out for letting purposes as well you want to have a wedding you want to have a conference you want to have there's a hall there's a, hall, there's a thousand seater hall here uh, uh, that uh, is meant for that purpose yes. and there's an amphitheater there is a, a main stage theater for play there is a, a museum there is a, a gallery there is a library so it's uh, the prisons, Ekiti State Prisons, used to be on this right ground. on the spot. And you complained to me at the time that yeah. you didn't think it should be in the center of, of town. town. Because originally it was in the center of town. When it was built here in 1922, right. this was not even outskirts. It was bundogos <laughs> completely. But then civilization caught up with it and other additional um residences came to to town mm. and it really didn't just fit yes. being here that's mm. why it was moved to the outskirts yes. uh, of town in order to utilize this space much more effectively and, and we think what we're doing with it is it's um, pretty uh interesting so people who want to sell clothing for instance retailers mm -hmm. they'll be able to get shops here yeah, well, they, they'll be able to get shops here. Yeah. Um, we, we, we have a limited amount of, of shop space here, yeah. but we have a mall that is coming up, uh, which is not too far off from here. Yeah, so and that would have shop right and have all the other wow, so facilities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, quite um, going to be busy times. Yeah. Well, I wanted to see a little bit uh, of his achievements in the health sector. And so he took me around, uh, headed out to the Ekiti State Teaching Hospital and the Fumi Olayinka Cancer Center. Don't forget that the former deputy governor of Ekiti State, Fumi Olayinka, um, passed away in 2013 as a result of breast cancer. And we feel that this is... Uh, for us, a much better tribute yes. uh, than all the. Named after yes, that? it's so it's named after it's Female Inca Diagnostic Center. Mm, it's uh, well, diagnostic and wellness. I think my my wife decided that they must add wellness to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, center. So. so the machines will be brought. The in. machines are they already. They, no, they, I don't think they've moved them there, but they're already in the hospital. They, they brought them. We, we got the machines from G Electric. I mean, okay. the mammogram itself is about 60 million naira, uh, and then some additional facilities. And, you know, if a person is diagnosed here, can the state teaching hospital handle because it? They can. They can because we're also doing some work on the theatres. We have radiologists here, we have uh, plastic surgeons, we have consultants in various fields of medicine. Um, and what they tell me is that, look, they're pretty competent. It's the equipment and the associated uh, facilities yes. that make it difficult for them to do some of what the complicated uh, surgeries that uh, they're trained to do. Yes. So. We have to give them the benefit of the doubt, but in the event that they can, then um, at least once detected, we can go to Ife, we can go to Ibadan, UI, and in some cases, if it's pretty complicated, India. But at least we would have the benefit of knowing, knowing yes. early enough. Yes. And who knows, even if it is one life that is saved as a result of early detection, it is still something, and I'm sure we'll save more than from the cancer center named after the former deputy governor Fumi Olayinka, the governor took me to the new general hospital named after the Ewi of Adoekiti. Incidentally, right there on the site beside the general hospital is a special center, a long center, he says, donated 
by Chevron for the benefit of AKT people. It's a donation from Chevron Oil and we decided to make it part of the General Hospital yes. because you know we gave the old General Hospital to the university right. as the uh, hub Medi for the faculty. medical faculty and the teaching hospital. Right. We then decided to build a new General Hospital uh, which actually started under the ONI administration, but it was literally at the uh, seeding stage then. Yeah. Uh, and then when Chevron offered to support us with a medical facility, yeah. we suggested to them that it might be best to put it right next to the General Hospital. The General Hospital is a 300 bed hospital. hospital. Yes. And the Chevron um, facility here is a 30 bed. Will it be equipped? It will be equipped. They, they, they're going to equip it. Yes. It's, they, they would actually, it's a turnkey project. They deliver it to us. Um, ready, ready. ready to go. They would do everything and then uh, with all of the equipment uh, and, and, and just hand it over. And it's virtually ready. I think this is the, the words. Yeah. This is the male and female word. This is one word. That's the other one. The other one is there. But why long? It's not as if people in Ekiti tend to have long diseases or long infections. Not necessarily. Uh, but we do need a place that can look after uh, people who develop chest or lung infection uh, in a specialist environment, environment. Yeah. And, and that's what this does mm -hmm. and it's very complementary to the main general hospital which will now feed the tertiary yes. hospital in Adwekito but the general hospital is also such that we want it to be a training wow. facility right. for our new doctors we're currently training doctors out of the Ekiti State University yes. and they're just getting to their clinical training stage. Yeah. Uh, so we envisage that this would be another facility that will complement the current um, facility and this is like the outpatient where they meet the star reception area. Yeah. So the new hospital, the new general hospital, I can see that windows are already in yeah. there. Uh, how soon Oh, we, we also envisage that uh, by early next year, the new general hospital, they are the roofing stage. What they're doing now is yes. preparation for to, 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 to put the roof on and the plastering has started. In fact, most of the inside has been plastered. And, uh, and this hospital is named after the Ewe of Adwekiti. It's named after the Ewe of Adwekiti. Um, well, it's, it's something in its community and we don't want it to lose the local flavor even though it's an absolutely modern establishment yes. but the way of doing it is quite modern himself mm -hmm. uh, so what 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 community what is this area called oh this area is actually known by the uh, product that comes from around here it's uh -huh. called agricolokwe because we have a palm estate oil palm, in, uh, oil palm estate okay. in the area so yes. people relates the place to the oil palm and, right. and the area is tagged, the agri or Lokba area. Okay. Yeah. Well, from the Fumiola Inca Cancer Center, we made our way to the new state pavilion. Uh, the governor says so many events are held in government and so many of these events have to be held in the stadium, even though it isn't exactly suitable for all purposes. For instance, Children's Day. So this, he says, is their own form of the Tafawa Balewa Square. This is 17 years of Ikiti State. There is no place where Ikiti people can gather to organize or host public events. Yes, we have the stadium, but the stadium does not have the space. This is a 12,000-seater pavilion, almost in the shape of Eagle Square in Abuja much smaller than Tafawa Balewa Square. But we have a 12,000-seater 
pavilion which of course a parade ground right will it be grassed no 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 it's going to be tied uh, okay. it's going to be concrete okay uh, and then a parking lot around it we have underneath the the city area, area we have uh, restaurants we have offices we have shops all around and it's, it's a four I, um, a rectangular shape. shape. Uh, pavilion. It's a pity we can't uh, come down in the rain. But I mean, oh, Independence Day now. You can so use Independence Day now, instead of using the stadium where we have a turf now, right. we've, we've just redone the stadium and it has a synthetic top there are some things you cannot do, do there on it, on it. We, you just i can't wear my heels on it exactly you can wear your heels on it you can come here wear your heels have a uh, a crusade yes. an evangelization campaign you yes. can also have campaigns yes. politicians can uh, hire the place hold their events we we can have children's day yes. which currently we normally have in yeah. prize school grounds uh, and this is this is a state prize school i think it has been there for better than ever it's not an appropriate ground for such events yeah. the old personal parade of nysc yeah. graduates from prize school as well mm -hmm. so this is a much more longer term i mean pastor adebayo kumoyi mm -hmm. As fat, all of them come to town yes. and they go and clear some bush in order to, to be able to all, use all, all, all their events when they could actually really be in. Uh, so, the, this you, the state will make money from this. Oh, as yeah, well. yeah, all of these things that we do, we, we always have our eye on the ball. <laughs> we will make money, it wouldn't even be, be run by the state, ah. we will give it out to private management. Right. And make sure we get returns from them. So it's not, um, I'm the governor's brother, so... No, 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 no. Governor's brother, you pay. Even the governor pay. When will it likely be completed? Actually, it's, it's, it's ready for December. It, it's actually done. It's, they're, they're getting ready for the roofs. Right. Uh, there. Which, which, the roof is there. It, it, it was um, fabricated in China. Okay. And they brought it in now. So it's, it's just to... Uh, place it so they're, they're mm. finishing the um, scaffold yes. for, for the roof. And and the shops are obviously will be available to anyone who can oh, afford yes. Oh, yes. It's to rent. To it's not going to be kept and, for uh, once once that's done all of mm. this will now be all of this area where on would be tied. Right. Uh, and the fence has been done already. Of course local content still operating oh, it's the same, here it's the same policy here mm. and, and we're going to we're dualizing this road okay that's what what's that road called this is called the bolaige road okay that, that's the new in your road it okay. goes out of the KT. KT, but yeah. not the normal one you take not the waraja no 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 no, no not the in adwekiti road this one would take a back route right but it's dualized it will come out at igede we have the new central bank there we have the new federal high court we have the new court of appeal we have INEC. so you uh, really need to open that so road we need to open up the, the road you need to uh, open up for appropriate use we'll take a break now join me again after the break Well, welcome back my concluding moments now with the governor and chief executive of Ekiti State as I ask him what exactly is he doing in the housing sector? Well, he's brought me out here to the outskirts of Ekiti State and this, the Ekiti State Affordable Housing Scheme, a joint development of a thousand low-cost housing units consisting of two and three bedroom bungalows and four bedroom detached houses for Ikiti people. How are you? So this is one of it, the other duplexes. The other side. I think it's a three bed. Yeah. 
These are the pillars for the, for the edges. edges outside. Yeah. What, what is this road called? This road. This yes. is the Iwaroko road, the road that goes to the university. Okay. And this is the Fountain Estate. Fountain Estate. Fountain seems to be a recurring. Yeah, because Ekiti is known as the Fountain of Knowledge. Okay. So many of our. This round thing is a mold. Yeah, it's a mold for the pillars outside. Ah. So these are the pillars that will stand on, that will stand this. on this. So they're just making the mold okay. and then they will take it out. Are you planning this estate for? It's a middle income, low income uh, housing estate. One of the greatest challenges we're having to cope with yes. in the state now is its growing population right. without a commensurate number of properties yes. to, to, accommodate. to accommodate the growing population. Yes. And it then means that the cost of renting is so prohibitive, very high in, in Ekiti, relatively speaking. And one of the promises we made to our people was that we would make homes available at an affordable rate. So we are now starting this. Um, we are for teachers. It's a mortgage. There's an estate housing estate for teachers. We have this general one. Then we have um, slightly more um, luxurious, luxurious uh, estates, but which would be just provision of land, and then you go build and build your what you want there. Absolutely, just site and services, as yeah. they call it. So and that's what we have. The, the Ekiti homes. The Ekiti homes agenda has a plan to build 5,000 homes right. in different categories. So we have a lot of developers who are involved in partnership with us in the Ekiti Homes Agenda. Where my body states is building in the region of about 500 homes. We have the Federal Road Safety Corps also building homes. We have the Housing uh, Action uh, Trust for, for, for teachers. We have um, our own uh, joint initiative by Fountain Holdings Company and um, uh, a foreign uh, developer, Alexander Jones. So it, it's going to be all around the state like that. The important thing is it must be affordable. We must provide an opportunity for mortgage yes. and then allow people to use part of their own uh, salary to pay for this over the long term. Yes. They have to be members of the APC to be able to benefit no, no, from no, no, the mortgage no, 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 no. We don't run any scheme like that in Ekiti. <laughs> Once you're an Ekiti person and you meet all of the conditions, you qualify, you are entitled. We don't distribute uh, patronage in accordance with party card uh, affiliation. Okay, so come and do you want to see me? No, let him talk, let him talk. Oh. Let him talk. I studied political science in the university. Here. Okay. So doctor has been telling me that he, he, he has the connection in field that he can bring me to you. Yeah, but you haven't not aware. How come, have not How come you have not I, come? Sir? How come you have not come? I haven't seen the opportunity of getting to Okay, you. go to the ADC. That man in uniform. All right. The so blue uniform. Yes. Go to him. Tell him that I said you, you should take his number and come and see me. So take his number, call him, and then he will arrange for you to come and see me. Hello, sir. The campaign hasn't started. <laughs> so campaign. Yet, this is the first time that 
this is like a campaign. <laughs> but this is unannounced. They, 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 they didn't know I was coming here. If I was because you mentioned home, that's yeah. why I said, okay, let's turn and <laughs> go and see it. Okay, well, joining me now on the program are the three men behind the housing estate here in Ekiti State that um, I'm visiting with the governor. There's Mr. Olushegun Akinyele, there's Muiwa Ogumilade, and of course, John Okonko, who I understand oversees um, this construction. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Right, so John, take us through this. Was it difficult to mobilize on site? Did you have any challenges coming here? Did Omo Niles, as we call them here, did they disturb you? Uh, it's been a very long journey. Mm. And of course, you have challenges in the project of this size. Yes. But fortunately for us, we have a very progressive governor who has been extremely supportive, mm. uh, support, uh, supporting to us. Yes. Uh, he's provided all the uh, uh, amenities that we need and uh, access to stakeholders, local stakeholders. Yes. So we've been able to overcome those challenges without mm. much, uh, too much, too many headaches. All right. Yeah. I, I'm looking at, at the site. It's about eight in the morning now, and there's so many people here. Are these people from within Ekiti State? Yes, they are. We have a 40% local content provision right. both, uh, for labor and also for contractors. Right. So all the people you see on site are from the city states. Okay. And uh, overall, we're going to employ between 5,000 and 10,000 uh, indigents uh, on this project. Did you have to train them? Are they all skilled? Or when you, when you employ these uh, Ekiti indigents, you still kind of update their skills? Yes, we have a training program because the, the essence of this project mm. is quality. Right. So we want to ensure that the houses will deliver at top rate. Mm -hmm. and the buyers move in, that's all they have to do. Mm. They don't have to fix anything when they move in. So right. we've trained a lot of the staff and we have our site engineers who also supervise what they do on a daily mm. basis, mm -hmm. correct mistakes and train them on a daily basis. Correct mistakes. Yes. So it, this building we see, it, it, it didn't stand like this in one go. No. Right. There have been challenges. We've right. had to correct a few things. Mm -hmm. And by using this building as a template. A prototype. As a prototype. Yes. We're making sure that all the builders conform to the quality standards we've set for them. In this yes. one. All right. As you can see, we're a small team, a small management team. This is it. Just the three of you. Just the three of us. This is the management team you're looking at right now. And why a Kitty State? Because mm. this is one of the few states you can set up a three-man team to run a project of this size, mm. 1,000 houses, over 55 hectares, mm. without government interference. Right. Why? Because you have a progressive governor who mm. lets it be that way. Mm. He wants results. Mm. He's result-driven. And for that reason, government gives us assistance, yes. but no interference. He doesn't poke his nose no. into things. No. We tell him we'll deliver this by this date. He believes us, and we do it. Mm. End of story. Right. And that's the motivation for me to yes. invest time in Ekiti State yes. and for all of us to invest our time and our resources in Ekiti yes. State. And energy as and well. Energy. Yes. And the people of Ekiti State have been wonderfully receptive and very supportive. Like I mean, uh, you, you are not even a Yoruba person, right? uh, an Igbo man <laughs> here in Ekiti. Well, that's one of the things that, that holds us back in Nigeria. Yes. I tell everyone, um, a father first, mm -hmm. father and husband first, a Nigerian second, and a black man third. Everything yes. else is irrelevant. Mm. <laughs> so um, whether I'm building in, in Ekiti State or in Nasarawa State or in Kano State, mm. it doesn't make any difference. Mm. I'm a Nigerian. Yeah. And that's the beginning and end of it. So we all have to contribute to pull this country back up to where it used to be mm. because it's gone downhill. Yeah. And that's why we're here. All of us are from Ekiti. When we heard that at least His Excellency Mr. Governor mm -hmm. became the governor and we all looked at what input yes. can we contribute to our own state. Yes. And for from them we started looking for ideas mm. that okay what can we contribute mm. and from there a lot of ideas said okay about housing yes how can we develop housing um, um, and solve housing issue yes. in Ekiti State yes. and the governor was supportive mm. and from there we came down and then this program started yes. so the issue of Omonile or whatever <laughs> was not a case at yes. all. Yes. Is this the only site you will be operating for now or are there other sites that you're looking at? Yeah, this development is not only for Ado Ekiti. Right. It's all over Ekiti State. Right. There are other ones that are coming up in Ikere, all right. in Jeru. Okay. It's all over. Okay. It's a 5,000, you know, unit. Unit. So yeah. this is just 1,000? just 1,000 out of the 5,000 units right. that the governor 
promised the citizens of Ikiti State. Okay. This is October 2013. Yeah. How soon will this estate be complete? Uh, let's say 18 months. All right. Yeah, from, eight, from today. Yeah, 18 months. All right. Because now, in the next um, few weeks, uh, we are to make sure that at least 20 homes are um, completed. Right. So that the governor will come and do handover case to the owners. All right. Oh, yeah. okay. They already have owners, yeah, the 20. People are ready, yeah, to, ready buy. to buy. They are waiting for us. So, us, off the cars are ready. Yeah. They are ready for us. Ogola House in Token House, mm -hmm. where you live at the moment. Who is Ogola House in Token? Well, yes, this is Ogola House in Token House. It's a government house chalet, as I told you. It's not even government house. Okay. Uh, this is a chalet that was uh, built by Governor Fayoshe and commissioned by uh, President Basanja in 2006. Okay. Ogola House in Token used to be a former minister of the action group government right. from the uh, from Ekiti. It was one of the two key ministers we had in the action group government mm -hmm. uh, from 50, 56, I believe. Uh, and it's from Okemesi. It was from Okemesi, Ekiti. And um, it's a distinguished family. Mm -hmm. The Ashantoku family produced many firsts in AKT. Professor Benjamin Kaode Oshuntokun, Professor Jide Oshuntokun, Akin Oshuntokun is Chief Odola Oshuntokun's son. Thank you, Your Excellency, for thank, having us in AKT. Thank you for coming once again. It's always a pleasure to have you here. It's been um, a very, very enlightening walk about town, yes. and I hope you are able to get a newer taste of <laughs> what AKT is. Yes. I look forward to your return yeah. very soon. We'll be here for the election. Oh, wonderful. Thank we look you, forward to that. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's it for this week from Ekiti State in the southwest region of Nigeria. Of course, you may like 60 Minutes with Angela on Facebook. Alternatively, you can follow me on Twitter, Angela at 60 Minutes. I'm Angela Ajetumobi. I thank you for the pleasure of your company.